Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. Good afternoon. My name is Zach Jacobson, and I'm a solutions architect here at Databricks. Today, I'm going to be showing you Databricks apps. And I wanted to highlight several things, but I'm going to first begin with an example on how to use Databricks app in an actual use case that my team created. So imagine that you have your favorite news app or any app that serves you some type of summary of information or some type of insightful information. And every morning or every afternoon or periodically throughout the day, you check in and maybe you have a new story or a new insight. Uh, maybe you get give that app feedback based off of what you like or you don't like, or maybe it just tracks what you do and it gives you new insight every day. That is what we are going to kind of show today. Uh, it's going to be called this daily pulse. So imagine that same scenario, but on top of your Databricks lake house on it, in your entire data footprint. What if you could log into this app and rather like trying to explore a dashboard and and poke around and figure out, you know, you know how to slice and dice the data, the insight is just given to you uh, about your entire data and it's and it's tailored towards the person who's 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 seen this, right? So that's what we call a daily pulse. So this is a Databricks app. So I log in, it recognized me as a user, and it says, oh, this is Zach. We're going to show him data that's relevant for Zach, not for Bob or Tom or Sandy. So uh, this is around a simple sales data set, um, but this gives me a quick summary of this data using an LLM about sales forecasting data for different states um, that I care about. So you have you know dollar amounts for forecasts, different units sold, and then it also gives you insights for what you may want to see. You may, may want to see your ask tomorrow, right? So you've got this sales by country, different slices and dices of data. And then you've got this nice little handy visualization that kind of pairs with your summarization here or your insight. This is all generated uh, out of our Mosaic AI framework with an LLM. And it actually then calls a tool which which shows and, and uses your data, right? So you're going from that general intelligence to data intelligence where you have an LLM that's augmented response based off of your data, right? So this is all in the Databricks app. And then we go down here and we have this feedback piece, right? So you enter this prompt and you say, hey, this is great, but I wanna see the sales by country and I wanna see this in ascending order. And also make this chart blue, okay? You hit submit, it enters, and it says, hey, your submission is great. And then you open up the app the next day or you know, just right now, and you draw this new insight. So now, where before we had the sales data with uh, aggregation at state level, uh, and it was descending order, now we've got this um, new insight based off, our, based off our last feedback uh, saying, I want to see the sales by country, not by state. I want to see it in ascending order. You can see this data, right? So now you've got the country. You aggregated that amount um, at the country level. So that's that sales amount. And then it gives you new insights based off of your last feedback. And then look at this. This is kind of the coolest part that I think. So with an LLM and then uh, the help of our LLM tool calling, we can use the data within your lake house to augment and generate uh, a visualization automatically um, with the help of an LLM. So this is a plotly graph, but now you take, you see that feedback got incorporated into not only the insight of the summary up here, but it's now into the visualization itself. So you now have that sales aggregated by country, you have it in ascending order, and you have that beautiful blue a color that you wanted, where before, right, it was green. Okay, so pretty cool. Um, that's the use case of the Databricks apps, but I'm actually going to walk you through here now kind of how I made this and how the value is so incredible because doing all of this is so simple with Databricks. So if I go to um, the actual deployment of this app, you can locate this from the Compute tab and go into the Apps tab which brings up this, you have the host URL that's actually hosting the app. 
You have the source code, which I'll show you here in a minute. You have different deployments and dates when they're deployed. You have automatic logging, and you have the base uh, configuration for the environment that got, got deployed, right? So super easy uh, to deploy this. You can see um, I have a serverless SQL warehouse that's um, calling the back end of this app, which I'll talk about as well in a little bit. You can navigate to the source file. So you have a classic app.py file, which you can which you can show all of the function functions that are called that make up the app. Um, this is a streamlet app that we're using. So you can see those streamlet dependencies being imported. You also have your YAML file, right? That's gonna show where to actually run and call the main application file. <clears throat> and then you have the requirements file, right? So any additional dependencies that we didn't add in the base environment. Okay, cool. So now I can go to where this was located. So if you go to the compute tab and you go over to apps, you can go see this is the app that's running. So what's even cooler is if you wanted to just get started today really quick, you could go and just go to this apps tab, hit create app, and you can select these templates. So we have several open uh, web app frameworks that we have supported, um, Dash, Flask, Gradio, Shiny, Streamlit. You can select any of these. And within the selection, you can go select either a chatbot or a data app or a simple hello world example, and you can hit next. And I'm not gonna spin it up, but within a matter of one to two minutes, you can have a full working app built on top of Databricks and using Databricks Compute. Pretty awesome. Okay, so now to our PowerPoint slide, I just wanted to walk you walk you guys through just to show you the value of Databricks apps, right? It's not just another web app building tool. Um, I'm gonna show you several things that are super important. So on a high level here, quick, personas of, of Databricks apps, everyone, right? So whether you're a developer of the app, uh, an app developer, data scientist, or you're a consumer, right? So sales, marketing, finance, or any other non-technical team, Everyone, I imagine, uh, almost in the world probably at this point, has used a web app. And so that will be the same thing, right? With Databricks apps, um, the the users are endless. So, you know, when to use it, a Databricks apps, right? So I mentioned dashboards. So in a dashboard, right, you go in and you kind of have to draw your own insights a lot of the time. Um, with notebooks, those aren't really, like, insightful. They're good for developing code. They're not really good for scaling and, you know, deploying across an entire team or organization. Um, when you want to, like, do write-back capabilities, right, a dashboard can't serve that. So if you want to write back to um, a database or a table, right, that's also another good example for um, a web app for Databricks apps. And uh, you're able to finally kind of extend this, right, to internal, external uh, applications, on top of the Databricks services. So what I mean by that is like you can attach any of our compute pieces. So whether it's a SQL warehouse, a model serving endpoint, a vector endpoint, um, you name it, right? You can attach these compute pieces into the app and that will do your, you know, big data crunching and then the app will kind of serve your, you know, your UI, your front end facing for users. So different examples of the apps. My favorite here is our rag chatbot, right? It's kind of our, our bread and butter, but we're really good at these rag chatbot faces. Um, there's a template for those that I showed you earlier, so go check that out. So different highlights. So first was the open frameworks, right? So we support um, these open frameworks right now. Uh, there will be more to come here in the future. This is brand new, right? We also have extremely ease to host the applications, right? So if you've ever developed a web app, it's one of the hurdles you have to, you know, have to figure out is like the infrastructure of what's hosting this app. So we completely manage that for you with our serverless compute. <clears throat> Super easy to share. We can we can even uh, share outside of just the Databricks workspace. Um, you can use the Skim Sync to synchronize any users outside of Databricks to be able to see the app. Finally, my favorite one is the security piece. This one is super cool. So we have built-in OAuth into the app. So we, Databricks handles all of that when you spin up the app. You also can um, only see the data that you can see in a Unity Catalog, right? So if you can see a table in a Unity Catalog or a volume or whatever piece of data, right, 
you should only be able to see that within the app. And that's kind of the beauty of this unified um, piece that we've built uh, with the Databricks apps is it's completely built on our Unity Catalog governance layer. So last kind of thing here is just kind of the anatomy of the Databricks apps. So we have the control plane, right? That's going to be your web app itself. Um, that is when you log into the Databricks workspace. And then your Lakehouse app, which is now called Databricks app, um, is the actual app which is hosted in um, calling your serverless compute plane, which attaches to any of these serverless compute uh, engines. And then finally, you have your data plane, right? So this is your cloud storage account. So uh, it can access right all the data that you have in your cloud account in a secure way. So that is really all I had today. Uh, I appreciate your guys' time.